hobby and uh, you know, this is a social club and we hope that everybody's here just to share in the night sky and have fun. Okay. Uh, a new members pack, when you do join the club, if you join, you don't have to, uh, you get a letter from Joe Lalamy, our president, you get a copy of our bylaws, uh, a lot of information as far as the uh, club, uh, roster, a lot of stuff. It has to be updated, but it's fairly uh, consistent, so we'll, uh, you'll get that when you, if you join. And meetings, such as tonight, we, we meet every fourth Friday of the month. Uh, we don't have a meeting this December because we have a holiday party and uh, we have a yearly picnic in Atoka. Uh, now we're having more than one. Atoka's our dark side, which we'll go over. And we have a Messier Marathon in March, which is coming up fairly soon. So we'll, we'll probably talk about that a little tonight during the meeting. Okay. Uh, meeting activities. Uh, we have kids programs, speakers. I said uh, I have a speaker here tonight. And Kelly, I think, is going to have a kids program tonight. Is that right? And uh, do a lot of things, it's a lot of fun. We do some club business, and then we have a thing called BAMSTIG, which is beverage after meeting. So we usually go off to a, a local restaurant and just socialize afterwards, and you're just welcome to join us. Okay, meeting speakers, we, we've had a whole slew of interesting speakers throughout the years. Uh, John Dobson, the father of the Dobsonian telescope, was here years ago, astronauts. Brother Guy, was uh, here a couple years ago. He was just at our holiday party, and uh, thanks to uh, Glenn Fitzgerald, our vice president. And uh, we always seem to have a very good slate of speakers there all the time. So we, uh, there's always something going on that, that you might like. Okay, on the internet, which is what most people find us, we have our website, our discussion forum, and uh, our newsletter, and. We do have wireless internet at Atoka, and we are on Facebook. So a lot of people find us on Facebook, and uh, that's pretty much how people find us throughout the, you know, throughout the whole area. And it's also where you get most of your information as far as uh, updates and events. All right, the website, this is what it basically looks like if you haven't been there. Uh, it's actually one of the uh, number one rated websites in the whole country for our astronomy site. Uh, we do have a lot of information, calendars, uh, there's a members only section, and uh, give our forums, and I also do the, the buttons, if you remember, you get a, you get a button for uh, kind of like a name tag, and Gabe Cardone is our webmaster, he's done a great job. So this is what the, this is what the new members section looks like, you can order your badge there, and then if you uh, click on some of these other areas, there you go. If you click on these areas, those are some of the other uh, downloads. You can download minutes of meetings, financials, uh, other membership related stuff. And then we have our uh, forum. And this is our primary means of communicating with each other between meetings, between special events. You have to be a member to be on this. And uh, it's just a good discussion group. and. We, uh, there's a lot of chatting going on with, uh, you know, like this weekend, some people are going to go to our dark side, and a lot of people say, well, I'm going up, who else is going up, and a lot of people will chime in, and, uh, you know, you kind of get an idea of who's going to go up there. Um, then we also have images sometimes. Some people share stuff that they've shot, and it's a really great way to share information, and if you had a question on stuff, it's a great place to say, well, what about this? And then some people will chime in and say, well, I got it, and this is how it works. So it's a really good way just to get a lot of information. Okay, our events calendar. Uh, usually our calendar is pretty packed full of stuff. And like this month here, we have obviously our meeting tonight and we had uh, uh, some school events and we have almost something planned almost every weekend. Um, this is a, at a different link you want to go direct, and Kenneth Harrison's our public observing coordinator. And like for instance, in February, we have uh, the Russell Planetarium, which is our Astronomy 101 class right there. And then we also have uh, board meetings, and just it, it'll fill up throughout the year depending on you know 
public events like schools and things like that. And if you click on one of the events, you'll see more information, so you can get more details as to where it's at, you know, what kind of things are going on. So uh, anybody's uh, able to click on this calendar and take a look. And in March, uh, things are getting a little busier. We have, for instance, our Farmer's Branch Star Party right there. It's pretty popular. And then we have our Messier Marathon going on right there, and that's a pretty popular uh, event. It's a yearly event where uh, this time of year is the best chance to get all 110 objects in one night. So, and then we have our Spectrum newsletter, which is uh, one of the best in the whole country, and it has a lot of information, and uh, it's a really well done newsletter. It's, it's on a little bit of hiatus right now. We're kind of regrouping a little bit. Uh, it's gonna, it's right now, it's gonna probably come out in February, and uh, right now, it used to be just one editor, now there's three of us doing it. It got a little too much for one person to do, so we're kind of spreading it out, but uh, we'll have it out pretty soon, and you can get past issues on our website for free, so uh, we encourage you to look at the old issues if you just wanna see what we've done in the past. Okay, our library, uh, Kelly Mills, our librarian, and that's the library in our house. Uh, there's a lot of books, magazines, uh, she's done an excellent job of maintaining it and uh, there's a little sheet on the member site you can look at where it shows you all the, uh, what's on there. Magazine subscriptions, as a member of the club you get special club discounts for astronomy magazine, Sky and Telescope. Uh, this is just for the first time if you, it's not for renewals but just for new uh, subscriptions. We also get a discount to another magazine called Astronomy Technology Today. Uh, that one's not listed here, but it's, uh, you get a little bit of discount on that one as well. Okay, public star parties. Uh, this is pretty much our bread and butter. It's what we do the most of, because you know one of our mission statements is to educate the public, you know, get people involved. And we have a whole bunch of these things. We have regular scheduled ones in Spring Park and Garland, Cedar Hill, Shores Park, uh, and we just special requests on Frisco too. Uh, we do a lot of schools. Uh, Astronomy Day happens twice a year. Uh, in fact, Shores Park is happening this weekend, this Saturday. So uh, Joe right there in the bottom row does that one. And then we have up here, our observing programs. Uh, the Texas Astronomical Society belongs to the Astronomical League, which is the largest uh, organization of amateur astronomy clubs around the nation. There are like, there's like 240 or more, and it's like thousands of people. And they have an uh, observing program, so they, they kind of encourage people to look at certain objects by compiling a program together and saying, okay, well here's, if you see so many objects, you get an award. So. Uh, there's 25 of these programs, and uh, it's a good, great way to just uh, get a, uh, like an object list to target things that you want to look at. Uh, John Rudd is our award coordinator, so uh, you can go to the Astronomical League website and you can um, uh, just click on any of the clubs and you can see the list. Uh, John is himself is a master observer, which means he's observed at least, what is it, 14? Is that right? And 10, okay. Out of 25, we do 10. In fact, Richard Brown, the person who just responded, is also a master observer. So we got a lot of uh, knowledgeable people in the club, and uh, it's just a really neat way to you know, look at the night sky, just get, you know, have an idea of what to look for. Okay, we have a lot of special interest groups. Uh, one of them is our amateur telescope maker. Uh, Special interest groups are just little subgroups instead of uh, tasks that meet uh, on an ongoing basis at, at a different location, and they're open to the public. Uh, this one's usually held in Wiley, Texas, at the what is it, the largest telescope ma a factory in Texas, I guess. That's what they call it. Wiley. In Wiley, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we do a lot of things like we, a lot of times we'll bring our own telescopes and people will look at them and we'll try to figure out what we can do to improve it. We'll do mirror testing. Uh, there's a lot of interesting events going on. In fact, the next one <coughs> of this is gonna, I think, gonna happen in February, so you might wanna look for that. And 
we also have an AFSE, or Astrophotography uh, Special Interest Group. This one meets once a month on the first Tuesday of the month at the Timber Glen Library in, uh, off of Midway and 190. Uh, uh, it's a real small little meeting, by about a couple hours long every month. And it's, they have some really nice subjects. Uh, they talk about uh, hardware, software, you name it. You can be a beginner, somebody who's never shot a, a photo, or obviously we've done some here with uh, solar photography. So it's quite fun. And Atoka. This is our dark side about 90 miles north of Dallas. And it's about 40 acres that we have up uh, in rural Oklahoma, past the casino. Uh, it's uh, n the nearest town is Katy, Oklahoma, or Durant, uh, Walmart, Atoka. You can see all the, it's not, things are not too, too uh, close there. And this is what it looks like on the front door. Uh, it's down a dirt road, and uh, if you, we have strict, strict red light rules in effect. In other words, we don't want you to shine headlights out of people. There may be people with uh, doing natural photography, and you know, people have their night vision. They don't want to, you know, lose it. Uh, if you do come, you want to just stay for a few hours and leave. Uh, you know, later you can park at this front entrance by that circle, and that's behind a bunch of trees and. As long as you're pointed away when you leave, you don't have to, you know, blast somebody with headlights. So then more of Atoka here. I mean, this is basically how it's, how you get there. You just go up 75 north, uh, past the, the Red River, or you know, going to Oklahoma, and then you pass the casino, and it's uh, it's it's pretty straight run. And there, there's a couple of shortcuts to get there, but it's just you know just a lot of dirt roads. About, it's about five or six miles worth of dirt roads once you get up to 75. And then this is what it looks like from above. And uh, it's a pretty nice place. I'll show you some close-ups of the, of the site. Okay, and then we also have, this is our uh, observatory, the Albone Observatory. There's a 16-inch bead telescope in there. And then we also have uh, what it looks like at night. This is our pavilion where we hold a lot, most of our events, uh, picnics, uh, messy marathon, it, it has a barbecue, and we get a, quite a big crowd in there. And uh, we also have workshops in there as well. And then we have our world-class solar outhouse. Uh, the solar part of it is, a, is actually a shower there too. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not bad, it's, it's been refurbished recently, repainted, so it's, not, it's pretty nice. Uh, place to relieve yourself, rather than going out in the woods. And this is the, uh, inside the Albone Observatory, it is a learning center, and uh, it has red lights at nighttime, and we have uh, some computers in there, uh, we have a microwave, there's, uh, we usually hold snacks in there, uh, a lot of times we'll just hang out in there during, when we're up there just to, you know, talk, or, you know, when it's cold or hot, we can go inside. Uh, we have like a small library there with observing charts. Uh, feel free to use these, but don't take them with you. They're just there to stay up there. So we appreciate you just uh, put them back when you're done. And we do a lot of events, like this is a Boy Scout troop that uh, went up to the Mayor Badge. And in fact, I think another Boy Scout troop is going up there in May. So we, we hold these every once in a while. Observatory, this is a 16 inch LX200. You have to be trained on this. Basically, you have to be trained on the computer and how to open and close the dome. Uh, we just want people to know how to use it just so they don't, you know, everybody knows how to make it work right and not break it. So uh, you have to reserve it online, and the training sessions are held usually during special events, or you can make arrangements with our observatory steward. And, uh, in fact, and I think he's actually going to go up there in a, this month, right? I think. Uh, I'm not sure if Bradford, Bradford's our observatory steward, but he's not here yet, so. That's him right there, if you see him. He's also our treasure, by the way, so. Uh, club telescopes, uh, we have, besides the 16 inch, we have a 12 inch light bridge and a mean 16 inch, I mean 10 inch uh, LX200. You'd have to bring some of your own accessories, like eyepieces. Uh, if you need, a, on the dog, you might need to collimate it a little bit. Um, 
but can't reserve these online because a lot of times people go up there and if they expect to use it and somebody else has it and reserved it, you might want to, you know, do that first. So a lot, a lot of times you don't have to go up there and bring your own equipment. Uh, bunkhouse. This is a, a bunkhouse we created. It holds about eight people and it's first come, first serve. And uh, it has air conditioning and heat and you just have to bring your own bedding, sleeping bag. So basically you just, when you get up there, just put your stuff on there and then you get that for, the, for that night. Uh, it's pretty comfortable. Um, kind of gets you out of the cold if you don't want to camp. If you don't want to sleep in your car, it's a nice option. Uh, member pads. These are uh, the close-up of some of the uh, setups we have on the field. We have these are the public ones. They're they're uh, concrete and they have power on most of the pads. Sometimes we have power issues. We will will let you know that that's a problem. But uh, a lot of times, uh, if you don't, if you, if you just go up there by yourself or during an event, you know these are first come first serve. And then this is what it looks like during one of our Missy marathons. We, we can get quite a crowd up there. So with these, you can just back your car up to, to the thing and just, you know, obviously you can camp. You know, it's nice that you can just have everything right there next to you. So it's a, it's a nice setup to just have everything right there. Okay, this is what it looks like at night. And we hope it stays this way. Uh, we are getting some light pollution there from the casino and Durant, but it's still pretty dark. And this is why, because you still get the Super Milky Way galaxy with naked eye. And um, occasionally we get some light zones from the, from the casino, but uh, depending on, we have a lot of trees there, so it tends to block that out a little bit. Uh, member roll-offs, these are uh, leased spots. They're larger pads in some instances, and people have put their own structures on there, and you can see there's a shed pod up there. Uh, some of them refurbished as one looks like in disrepair, but uh, that's been tear torn down already. Uh, there are various uh, sites up for lease. You can see right here, this is the layout. Uh, those are the lease pads, and then the bottom two are the uh, public pads. So at uh, various times, these are available for lease on, the, on, the, on those lease ones. So if you want, if you go up there, you like it, you want to What's nice about the having the roll-offs is you can store your equipment up there. You can, you can have kind of a nice setup where you know when you want to, if you go up there quite a bit, you can just have a lot of things ready to go. You don't have to you know haul, haul, haul everything up there at the same time. I wouldn't leave things up there per se, like expensive telescopes. It's not 100% secure. I wouldn't really leave an expensive telescope there for long. We've had some problems with you know people having stuff broken into, so. Just be a little careful. Okay, monthly star parties again. Um, again, we have them every weekend for Saturday, second Saturday, third Saturday, and fourth Saturday. Obviously, these are all uh, weather dependent. Uh, we, we encourage the public to come, bring their own telescopes if they want. Uh, volunteers, we always need to help out. You don't have to bring your telescope, but you know, if you just want to help answer questions, that's a good idea. Uh, we, Definitely like to bring your own telescopes because a lot of times we get a fairly good crowd and if you don't have too many telescopes then we might get a long line on your scope. And Gideon Ball, uh, CAST is a all volunteer organization. We uh, are a nonprofit and we rely on the support of our, of our membership and uh, it takes a lot to run this club, not just a few people. So. Uh, if you have any skills that you think might be useful, let us know, and we'll be glad to, uh, uh, you know, see what we can, what, how you can help us out. Okay, these are some of our elected officials. We got Joe Lalumi, our president, Glenn Fitzgerald, vice president, Billy Chick, secretary, and Bradford, Leonard, and treasurer. So these are our yearly uh, elected posts. We also have our club staff. These are these are uh, uh, mostly appointed positions. I'm the membership coordinator, Kelly's librarian. Uh, Karen Hennis Harrison is the public observing coordinator. We have publicity. Bob Logue is a dark side manager. Bradford is also the observing steward, webmaster, Gabe, and then uh, we now we now split up the spectrum into three people. 
And board of directors, these are the folks that help run the club as part of the policies and strategies. Uh, these are also elected to one year terms. And then we've got some other <coughs> volunteers like uh, Hugh Stevens is our first Saturday and Phil Jones the second Saturday and so forth. These are the coordinators and these are really great folks that are, are really help out and uh, they've been doing these for years. The Frisco's been around for like six years. And uh, it's just a, these people you get to know, they're, they're really cool people. So basically, in the, in the end, we all want you to have fun. Uh, we have a quite a diverse crowd, and uh, uh, we, we're one of the largest clubs in the whole country, and uh, we, we think we have a lot of fun, and we, we hope you do too. So, any questions? No? All right, thank you very much. <laughs>